Hi everyone, welcome to episode 35 of Off The Sprue. This is the final installment of the M113 diorama build. And in this one, we'll be uh, making some vegetation and uh, adding it to the groundwork. In part two, we uh, added some mud, some, some water effects. And in this one, uh, I'll briefly be showing you some of the things I did to uh, complete this diorama and add vegetation. Folks, as you know by now, this build has been sponsored by Zululand Hobbies here in South Africa. Do check out their website, zululandhobbies.co.za. Now to add vegetation to the diorama, I'll be uh, using a few products that comes off the uh, hobby shop shelf and also a few from the garden. I used a few uh, grass tufts. These are from Vallejo and I also used a, a few from AK. This is a very good product to keep around if you build dioramas and I always make sure to have a nice supply of these. Also use these bushes, they're from AK, very realistic indeed. And also some scatter material. These are a few leaves from a Green Stuff World and also some scatter material from RT Diorama. This is a, a forest uh, floor mix. The natural materials consist of roots and uh, little twigs. These come from the garden. Uh, just make sure that they're nice and dry. I also use the sea foam trees. These are available from most hobby shops. And uh, then finally for fern leaves, I use these bracken fern leaves. These are ferns in real life. And uh, these are found in mountainous areas here in South Africa. I also wanted to add this large tree stump. You'll remember from a previous build, I planned on using this and eventually I put it aside. I for this one, it certainly will work perfectly. And uh, I chose this rather large broken uh, tree stump, a dead tree. First step as always is to apply some primer. And uh, I love my black primer from Vallejo. I then uh, used a variety of brown tones and finally used, uh, I think this is German camouflage beige just to dry brush in uh, some highlight color. I then used these uh, enamel products from uh, Ammo Mig, uh, green, uh, green slime, uh, just to add some uh, color accent to the lower areas and all the recessed areas of the, of the stump. Now this picture is my main reference for adding vegetation. In this one you'll see many uh, thin, uh, tall little trees and that's exactly what we'll be making. First step of course is to uh, pin the, uh, the tree trunks, little twigs. To add some uh, more branches to this twig, I first drill an anchoring hole with a hand drill and uh, then a drop of super glue is all that's needed to uh, glue on an extra branch. And there we go, tiny little tree. For some additional foliage I used the little pieces of sea foam tree and these were also glued in place uh, in a similar fashion as uh, I used to glue in these, uh, these extra branches. And there you can see a nice little forest ready for primer and paint. Primer as always, Vallejo uh, matte black, and this is airbrushed uh, onto the entire tree surface, the branches, and also the sea foam. And there we go, ready and primed. This little tree is now ready for some color, brown and green. The brown I'll be using is from uh, Tamiya XF10, flat brown, and this is carefully airbrushed onto all the branches. In this case, I think I actually covered the entire tree with, uh, with brown first and uh, later added the additional greens. Next, to uh, lighter brown tones, earthy tan tones. And uh, I again used my, uh, my dry brush from Ammo Meg and uh, just dry brushed some of the lighter color onto the tree. Now, fortunately, nature has already given me this, all this wonderful texture so uh, the dry brushing will uh, certainly enhance this, giving us that fantastic uh, realism. Next up is a wash. In this case, I used MIG Productions Dark Wash. This, of course, is an enamel product. You can thin this with uh, 
odor is thinner and this is now applied to the entire tree trunk just to uh, add some of those uh, shadow tones to the recess detail. Now onto the green and I used yellow green and uh, airbrushed this carefully onto all the sea foam tree uh, branches. There you go, this is the final result, nice little trees, uh, very similar to the uh, thin raggedy trees that we see in the, in the reference picture. This very suspicious looking uh, substance is actually foam, this is colored foam that I've had forever in the stash. And uh, I'm going to use a sprayable adhesive, basically spray glue, and uh, just to stick this to some of the, uh, some of the leaves. Now be prepared to lose a few of these uh, little pieces of sea foam trees because they are very fragile but uh, if you stick to it long enough you'll uh, have a little nice little tree and there you go this is the final result certainly very happy with that. There are many methods of making scale trees this is one of the the easiest and the laziest ones uh, but for this build it will certainly suffice. Next I need to add some vegetation closer to the ground and in this uh, reference picture of these Australian troops and tracks you can see some uh, grass and uh, shrubs uh, growing closer to the ground. I'll be using these uh, tufts, grass tufts uh, from, uh, from Vallejo. Now, while these tufts do have a little bit of adhesive uh, at, the, at the bottom of each patch I do prefer to glue them in place with uh, ultra glue from uh, ammo mix and this stuff is just placed similar to what I'm doing there arranging them in a, uh, a random pattern as they would appear in nature. With the grasses done I can now position my uh, my broken tree and again this is uh, secured in place with a little bit of ultra glue and a pin more or less there that'll be perfect. We need some more bushes and for this I'm using uh, these very realistic looking bushes from Martin Welberg. This is a mat that can be cut to shape and uh, this is also glued in place with ultra glue. Keep in mind that ultra glue is white while it's wet but once it cures and dries it uh, becomes completely transparent. Jungle floors are made up of layer upon layer of uh, dead leaves and uh, different plant materials and uh, this British Army picture shows this very well. Uh, these are British troops uh, doing jungle training and you can clearly see the, uh, the jungle floor there uh, made up of layer upon layer of dead plant material and this is something uh, we'll be doing next. Going back to my original plan, over here I want my figures and over here I want it to be uh, more thickly vegetated. To make the ground texture I'm going to use this product from RT Diorama. It is a mixed forest uh, ground foliage mixture. This is all dry stuff and it's glued in place with some diluted ultra glue, basically ultra glue in water. First uh, I apply a, uh, a layer of glue similar to that and uh, then the, uh, the scatter material is, uh, is, is placed on the diorama floor, making sure that you cover every inch. This is the result when the glue is dry, completely transparent. Now at this stage the texture is correct but uh, it's not very well blended into the entire diorama base and uh, that's something I'll be fixing next using a Vietnam Earth pigment. I carefully just brush this stuff over the uh, ground covering and uh, this will blend it more into the, uh, into the existing uh, diorama base. Very lightly, not too much. The bushes and the trees can now be added. First drilling a little uh, anchoring hole and uh, then just placing the, uh, the bush or the tree in place with some uh, glue underneath. Now on to ferns. Now I've covered this in a previous video. I certainly love this uh, natural product. It's found here in South African mountainous areas, bracken fern. And uh, I chose some of the, uh, the smallest leaves to be in scale with uh, the rest of the diorama. And uh, these will be painted with two green shades from uh, Vallejo. First being a zinc chromate green, covering the entire leaf, similar to that. And then finally just the, uh, the spine 
uh, spray a little bit of uh, lime green just for that little color accent. This is now glued in place similar to the trees and the bushes. And there's the result folks, certainly loving this so far. Nice little ferns, jungle ferns. I need some additional leaves and for this I'm going to use this uh, punch from uh, Green Stuff World. This is very easy to use, simply use some, uh, some dried leaves similar to this and uh, punch out a few uh, tiny uh, scale leaves with the punch. And this is now individually uh, glued in place on the forest floor. Bit of a tedious job but certainly the uh, effect is well worth it. Now at this stage the, uh, the road surface, the track surface is very wet and muddy but the, uh, the forest area is still dry and this is something we need to fix next. And uh, for this I'll be using wet effects from uh, Ammo Meg. Of course this is an enamel product and it can be thinned with odorless thinner. I brush this onto the, uh, the boots and the lower legs of all the figures as well as the forest floor just to give it that, uh, that moist look. Guys you'll remember right in the beginning when I started this pull I told you about the, uh, the 80s comic book series The Nam from Marvel and my story for this diorama was actually inspired from this comic book. Uh, if you read the, uh, the series, you'll know that there was a very unpopular senior NCO who had the uh, entire platoon walk back to camp uh, after a firefight, not arranging uh, transport for them. So that story served as the inspiration for this uh, theme of the diorama and these grunts have just been told by the, uh, the track commander that unfortunately today for them there is no ride home because the track has broken down. This was such an enjoyable build, I really enjoyed it. Thank you to everyone who followed along, everybody who, uh, who came up with tips and ideas. I was fortunate to have input from a number of army veterans, I really appreciate it. And uh, I think all these combined efforts certainly results in a uh, very realistic looking diorama. Guys, and that's it for the 113 build. Thank you to everyone who followed along. There are two galleries of pictures on my Instagram if you're curious to see a few more pictures of this build. Big thank you to everyone who sent me messages on, uh, on Instagram, uh, comments on this, on this build. I really appreciate it, guys. Really appreciate you following along. Also, a big thank you to my sponsor, Zululand Hobbies, for making this build possible. Uh, I hope to see everybody again in the future for uh, a new build coming soon.